Welcome my jungle friends to another math video. Yes, it's another math video. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, and look at all this action going on on our page. Look at white camera action. Yes, we have an engaged New York Rika video. It's module two, lesson 14. Oh, I see a lot of measurement type tools. I wonder if that's what this is all about. Of course it is, Mr. Wara. Okay, well, let's go ahead and focus in on what our whole purpose is. Why are we here? <laughs> we are here today, my friends, because we are going to be looking at an objective. It's our learning target, which is to use fraction and decimal multiplication to express equivalent measurements. Ooh, yes. I like it. It sounds like it's going to be another great, great lesson. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. And it says 14 days equals how many weeks? Really, Mr. Wara? This is going to be so easy. Yes, it is. I know. But you know what? This is just the first problem. I promise you, it will get harder. But let's go ahead and just start off looking at this problem in a new way, okay? Because we are looking at our objective. So we have here 14 days equal to how many weeks? But let's kind of, let's rewrite this and kind of think of this another way. Let's think of it this way. Isn't 14 days equal to 14, let's think of this way, times one day. Does that make sense? We have 14 days. By the use of the identity property, we can say that 14 then times that one day is going to give us our 14 days. Okay? We're good. Yeah. Woohoo. Now, obviously, we have two factors here. We have one factor of 14. We have another factor of one day. Now, my question is, what fraction of a week is one day? I sure I heard somebody out there say one seventh. Oh, that's so impressive. So we could actually rename our one day as one seventh since one day of a week is one seventh. So let's do that. Let's rewrite this then as 14 times one seventh week. Yeah, I hope you're still with me. We're just rewriting this in a new way. I know some of you are thinking, what is Mr. Wara up to here? I know, I'm up to something here. So now, by using these parentheses, it kind of makes it clear that this is a factor, or we'll, we'll call it a conversion factor, because it's allowing us to go ahead and make this conversion. It has the same value, though. One seventh week, we decided, is the same as one day. Well, what's 14 times one seventh week? Yeah, wouldn't that just be 14 sevenths week? Does that make sense? sevenths, 14 sevenths week, meaning 14 over seven. You may have remembered from fourth grade, like when you had 14 over seven, that we could decompose that. What do they call this? Like a number bond or something like that? That seven over seven and seven over seven here would give us our 14 sevenths. And that's what we have here. We have 14 sevenths week. And that's the unit of measure that we have now. So, so the question just becomes now, is what is 14 seven weeks yeah would well, it be just two weeks right we have 14 divided by seven now did we convert from a larger to smaller unit or a smaller to larger unit and yes we actually went from a smaller unit to a larger unit days to weeks and because a day is smaller than a week what we did was we needed to divide. Tell me this isn't easy. Oh, look at here. What do we have here? We have a caterpillar. Oh my goodness. Aren't you a cute little fella? Yeah? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It sounds like this guy's really have a boring life. Just eat leaves all day. That's pretty much it, huh? Well, you know what, buddy? Yeah, you, uh, you want to help me with this math problem? I'll go ahead and let you figure it out on your own and see how what you come up with. But here are you guys out there and Cyberspace. It says now that it says it's your turn. Take a moment to convert 24 quarts to gallons. Okay, so I'm thinking about how we solved that last one. We wanted to rewrite this problem. Okay, so the quarts here in this case is really 24 quarts would be equal to 24 because I'm breaking it up into two factors times just simply, and I'll put this in parentheses. And now I have one quart. 24 times one quart is equal to 24 quarts. And then what I did was, if I recall, that's right, I wanted to represent what gallons, because the last one was days to week, so what was one day of a week? So here what I'm looking for is, what is 
one quart of one gallon, okay? What's that conversion? And you know what? I happen to know that one. That's four quarts in one gallon. So I'm going to take 24 times, and then I'm going to just change that to one quarter gallon. I know. You're thinking, Mr. Warrior, you are one sneaky teacher. I know. Have to be. Look it. I have fifth graders. Can you blame me? We have to be on top of our game. Now we have simply 24 over 4. And of course, I knew you didn't measure is going to be gallons now. <laughs> Yes, I like this. This is so much fun because 24 divided by 4. I know my times table and my division facts, and that's 6 gallons. 6 gallones. Yes, that is awesome. So much fun. See, I think even a caterpillar had so much fun. Hey there, buddy. You know, I like that. There you go. You don't have a nose. You know what? You need a nose. Let me put a nose in there. There you go. There you go. Mr. War is an artist. Yeah, right. Okay, let's go to the next problem, my friends. There we go. Whoa! It's a butterfly! Don't tell me that caterpillar already... You know what? I remember you. You were in a previous video. That's right. I remember you. Pretty cool little butterfly dude. Yes. You know what? Another... Oh! What? Oh, really? You actually said you solved the last math problem? All right. I didn't see any of your work, so... Now, oh, you did it all mentally because you really don't have any hands to write anything? You know, can you really blame the guy? Okay. Well, good job. You know what? Oh, really? You want something. Okay, it's always these feature animals, like they really think they're the focus of the video. Okay, but you know what? Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll give you some kind of award later on, and maybe let's see if you can solve this problem. Okay, all right, buddy, my little helper. Thank you, dude. All right, so we're gonna go from 24 feet into yards. Again, feel free to solve this on your own by simply putting the video on pause. Okay, I'm kind of thinking I'm getting the hang of this here. So last time, so we have 24 feet. I want to break it into two factors which is 24 times, and we kind of put that in parentheses. It's actually just going to be one foot. And then, of course, I can just rewrite this as, right, because I'm looking to see how many feet in a yard. Actually, there's three feet in one yard, but that means one foot would actually be one-third of a yard. So if I put 24 times, and then I just put over here one-third yard, and I'm just going to abbreviate that, See, that'll work for me because that is actually what one foot is. This, again, is that conversion factor that we talked about. So now I can go ahead and show this as 24 over 3 because 24 times 1 is 24. And then that's just going to be yards. I have my new unit of measure. 24 divided by 3. It's a fact, family. 8 times 3 is 24. That's right. So I'm just going to put 8, 8 yards. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Tell me this is not fun. All right, Mr. Butterfly, is this a lot of fun? Yeah? Cool. Question is, did you give the right answer? Is that right? <laughs> did you show your work? Uh-huh. Oh, you did it in your mind again? You know, it's okay to do some of this mentally, but I don't know if I really believe you. Next time, you know what? You're going to have to show your work. Okay, I got a prize for you, but you better show your work because that's key to doing math. Okay, let's take a look at another problem here. Looks like to me, we're going to be doing some metric units here. I see centimeters and I see meters, and it looks like they're asking us to convert 195 centimeters into meters. So let's use the exact same process to convert. We are going from smaller metric units, and those are our centimeters, they're smaller, and to larger metric units, which of course here um, is the meters, but we're going to be using decimal numbers. So let's go ahead and convert then the 195 centimeters to meters. So just as we've been doing, Let's rename our 195 centimeters as a multiplication expression with one factor naming the unit. Remember, naming that unit as 1. 195 times 1 centimeter is 195. Cool. Yeah, I like this. Now, it's really important that you do see that 1 centimeter unit. We're not changing the value at all. Now, let's rename the factor as meters. Remember that conversion factor that we had over here. So this is going to be equal 195. We're going to multiply that, but that conversion factor. So one centimeter is equal to what fraction of a meter? Because there's 100 centimeters in one meter, I could say I could rename that factor as 100th meter. So how do we write that in decimal notation? 0.01. So let's write that down. And we're going to rewrite this now as meters. Are we good? That quantity is the same. One centimeter is equal to one one hundredth meter. 
And what is 195 times that 1 100th meter? Yeah, it's just 1 and 95 hundredths. When we have 195 and we're multiplying by 100th, one and that's really what we're multiplying here, that decimal place is going to move two places to the left. Because multiplying by 100th is the same as dividing by 100. And that's why that decimal place moves. So we end up with 1 and 95 hundredths, but now we have a new unit of measure. Good old Mr. Meter. Oh my goodness, this is so easy. Okay, now what do we have? Oh, you're back. Okay, my friend, you want to take a moment here, huh? See if you can convert the 4,500 grams into kilograms. All right. All right, you, you just keep working. All right, we'll come back to you and we'll see. And if you've shown your work, maybe I have a prize for you. All right, so now it's our turn to go ahead and solve this problem. So we have here 4,500. You know what? Yeah, we need to make sure that you're not looking at our answers. Okay, um, you, you don't mind if I put like a couple of black circles, right? Okay. Yeah, just to make sure that we know that you're not looking. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Perfect, okay. So now he's got a blindfold on. He can't see. Okay, so 4,500 grams, and we want to know how many, and I'm going to just write it this way, kilograms. All right, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my problem. Okay, and now we're looking for that conversion factor. And this is going to be multiplied. So now since we're going, we are going from a smaller to a larger, which is what we did last time. So we know that we need to find the value of one gram, like what is one gram of a kilogram. And it's not very much, right? Because a gram is pretty small and a kilogram is really large. And a kilogram is three powers of 10 greater than a gram. So we could write that as that decimal notation would be 0 0.001. That's right. And that's going to be kilograms. I end up with, yeah, four and a half or 4.5 kilograms. Okay, and I'll spell it out again, just so you know, same thing, and the abbreviation. Because that decimal place moved three powers to the left because we were multiplying by one one thousand, all right? Because that's what that would be if you wrote it as a fraction. You would have 4,500 times one over 1,000. means the same thing. Okay, we were just using decimal notation. Now you have 4,500 divided by your 1,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Did our friend come up with some work? Okay, buddy, where's your work? I don't see your work. Oh, okay, you're hiding it. <laughs> you thought I was going to look at your work? All right, let's see what you got here. Okay. Oh, my goodness, you have some work here. Oh, what's, what do you have here? Okay, for, uh, Okay, you took 4,500 times 1 over 1,000 kilogram. Okay, that's correct. Oh, you did it as a fraction. Oh, my goodness, you were a brilliant little butterfly. Oh, my goodness, yes. All right, you, you totally rock, dude. All right. Here you go, buddy. I got you a nice little trophy. There. <laughs> Can you get that on there? Oh, my goodness. It's gotten too big. You, you, you sure you got it? Come on. Don't lose your grip. Okay. There you go. You are a winner. Yay. All right. Okay. Mr. Wara, this is really crazy. I know it is. I don't know why I'm doing that. Let's move on. Okay. Again, now it's your turn. Take a moment to convert 578 millimeters into liters. Okay, so we've done a few of these now, so I'm just going to, want to kind of cruise along a little bit faster here. So we're going to definitely want to take our 578. We want to multiply it, right, by that one factor, and the factor being one millimeter. And then we're going to go ahead and convert that, okay? And now we're going from smaller to larger again, so that kind of lets me know. And millimeters to liters, there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter so i could actually multiply that by yeah it's going to be 0 0.001 and then that l there is for my liter and then i'm going to go ahead and and show this just the same thing that we've been doing okay so we're multiplying by 1000 so what happens the decimal place is going to move three times to the left so that we end up with 578 right thousandths but liter because that's our new unit of measure up here. Okay, just showing this in another way. Now again, the concept that's really important that you understand is, is when you are multiplying by a power of 10, the decimal place is going to move either to the left or the right. And in this case, since our power of 10 is 1 1,000th of a whole number, it's actually going to move to the left because the number is going to get smaller. Cool, let's keep going. Okay, now problem three says a container holds 16 cups of juice. It says convert the capacity to pints. And it says here two cups is equal to one pint. 16 cups is equal to how many pints? 
That's the problem. That's what we're being asked. But we could go ahead and do what we have been doing and just take the 16 cups then and let's go ahead and show that as two factors. And now we can again rewrite this then 16 and then we're going to have this times and we want to find that conversion factor well this one cup. Now cups are smaller than pints. So that means we're going to have a fraction here. And so what is one cup of one pint? And it since it takes two cups to make one pint, that would mean that one cup would be one half pint. And that becomes my conversion factor. And now when I multiply through, you can see I'm going to have 16 over 2, okay, which is going to be equal to 8. And with the unit we were dealing with was pints. Woo! Yeah! I love math! Dun, dun. Okay, really, Mr. Wara? I don't know. I can't help myself. Is that... Uh, I mean, it's so much fun, and this looks like this is probably the last page here. Last problem. It says a truck weighs 1,675,280 grams. When they say that a paper clip is about the weight of a gram. Could you imagine? One million... 675,280 paper clips would be the weight of a truck. Now it says convert the weight to kilograms. Okay, we are going from smaller to larger. I can see that right away because grams is our base unit and we have 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So let's go ahead and write our problem down it like we have been doing. And I'm going to rewrite it again. Now I need to write it with a conversion factor. So I need to ask myself here, what is one gram of one kilogram and isn't that going to be that one one thousandth because we need one thousand grams to make a kilogram therefore a gram is only one one thousandth kilogram and then this is where we just could be moving the decimal place three times to the left one two three so i end up with a number of one thousand six hundred seventy five and two hundred eighty thousands none of the digits change okay and we could drop the zero we could just have it written as this is correct as well 28 hundredths is the same as 280 thousands and of course the unit of measure kilograms Woohoo! yeah oh my goodness it's another video is that it it is the end oh hand me a tissue yes yes mr warren okay anyway i appreciate you joining me on this wonderful journey through fifth grade math Anyway, my friends, now, live long and prosper.